Hey everybody, what's going on and welcome to Guns N' Roses Central. And Guns N' Roses kicked off their European tour uh, with their first show at Slane Castle in Ireland yesterday. And around the time that their show started, we got the news that Greg Allman of the Allman Brothers actually passed away at the age of 69. And I wanted to talk in this episode of Guns N' Roses True Story about the history of Greg Allman and the Allman Brothers and how it relates to Guns N' Roses. And we've already had some members of Guns N' Roses come out and give their condolences. Slash posted this on social media. He said, really sad news about Greg Allman passing. Such an awesome talent and massive influence. And Duff McKagan also wrote this on social media. He said, rest in peace, Greg Allman. And Slash did an interview with Howard Stern back in 2012. Um, so he was on Howard Stern's show the same day that Greg Allman was going to be on Howard's show. So Slash went in the studio first, and then Greg Allman went in the studio after Slash's interview was done. So Slash was on there promoting his first record with Miles Kennedy, Apocalyptic Love. And the topic of Greg Allman came up, and here's what Slash had to say about the Allman Brothers. Kids. Rock and Roll Tuesday continues as Greg Allman, the legendary. Are you an Allman Brothers guy? Oh, well, yeah, definitely. Don't you That's agree? That's my, my favorite, what I guess you consider Southern rock right. band. That's Don't you think they created Southern rock? Like, who was yeah, before them? I mean, really, I think they did. I mean, when you think of the Allman Brothers, that's they created really a the genre. pinnacle of, yeah. Was um, uh, Dwayne Allman... One of my favorite guitar Gotta be players. one of the greatest slide guitar yeah. players, right? Yeah. And, I mean, yeah. And, and Dickie Betts, the idea of the two of them both being lead guitar it was players. amazing. Crazy, right? Yeah. Yeah, I can really rap rock, man. I listen to you. Yeah, well, hey, what do you think? I Look at my face. You know what I did my entire high school? I sat in my room and listened well, to Eat a Peach. they were practicing. You were listening. Yeah, I was listening. You think I would have played an instrument? What a dummy I am. You you're think Bill, I would have, you know. You're know. you playing your instrument. Yeah, well. Eh, whatever. At least I'm not a diva. Sort of. Look, he's got this whole studio here. Right? Yeah. Right. No diva here. All right, listen. Slash thanks. I'll see you around. All right. And in the same interview, uh, Slash also stated that he'd only met Greg Allman only once and that uh, he actually had a f funny thing in common with Greg Allman. So apparently Greg Allman and Slash dated the same girl. So if you guys want to listen to that part of the interview, I've linked to it down below. And it's kind of funny that they talked about Southern Rock because uh, Slash's first, um, it wasn't a solo album, but it was his side project, Slash Snake Pit, that he released in 1995, had a lot of elements of Southern Rock in it. In fact, the Southern Rock elements was one of the reasons why Axel and Duff didn't really want to work on the material that Slash was working on after the Use Your Illusion tour. So that was one of the reasons why Slash decided to take a break from Guns N' Roses and go pursue Slash's Snake Pit and put out It's 5 O'Clock Somewhere. Now, after that interview with Howard Stern, I've linked the whole interview down below if you want to listen to it. Slash was actually a little upset at the interview because there's a lot of stuff that Howard kept asking about, like Axel and Scott Weiland, and even Howard was pressing Slash about the, the time in his uh, marriage to Perla when they were temporarily separated. And he went to Opie and Anthony's show around the same day or the next day, and you could tell he was visibly annoyed a bit. And then uh, Slash ended up calling Howard's show, his producer Gary, and ended up thanking him for the interview because after Slash left Howard's studio, a lot of people on the street stopped Slash and told him that he did a great interview. So, And in 2014, Slash returned to the Howard Stern show. He was back you know, with his second album with Miles Kennedy, World on Fire. And Slash revealed the last time he was on Howard's show, which was in 2012, uh, he actually had to avoid one of the guests who was coming on the show, which was Greg Allman, because they had dated the same girl and there was some awkwardness there. Now, back in 2011 or so, Slash appeared on the TV show Top Gear, and it was the final episode of the season, and to play the final episode out, Slash actually played part of the Elman Brothers song, Jessica. So if you guys want to see the, uh, it's about a 50 seconds long or so, I've linked to the video down below. Now, this isn't the only time that members of Guns N' Roses uh, have actually paid tribute to the Allman Brothers. So, back in 2015, Slash, Duff McKagan, and Matt Sorum uh, paid tribute to the band, as well as ZZ Top, at a benefit called Adopt the Arts. So, the Adopt the Arts is a Los Angeles-based charity that preserves and creates art programs in U.S. public schools. And it features a number of high-profile musicians, including Billy Gibbons and uh, Butch Trunks as well. And uh, they played a set honoring ZZ Top as well as the Almond Brothers. So these are the songs that they actually played from the Almond Brothers band. So Slash played on the song uh, Stormy Monday. We had him also playing on the song Whipping Post. And then Matt Sorum played on the song St uh, Statesboro Blues. And uh, there's footage of it available on YouTube if you guys want to go check out. I've linked to the videos down below. And then several years after they played that benefit gig, uh, Butch Trucks, who was a drummer for the Almond Brothers, actually passed away. And Matt Sorum and Slash both honored him on social media. Matt Sorum said, lost the great Butch Trucks of Allman Brothers today. 
He was an amazing human being and drummer. He flew from Florida to help me with the, with the Adopt the Arts Kids program and we honored him for his contribution to art and culture. So grateful to have met this man. Thank you, Butch, for all your contributions to this planet. Hashtag rest in peace. And then we also had a message from Slash as well. So he said, honored to have met the great Butch Trucks. Rest in peace to a rock and roll legend. Now let's talk about Axl Rose and the Almond Brothers. Now it's known that Axl is an Almond Brothers fan. In fact, there was a story circulating on the GNR forums back in 2012 that back in March of, 20, of 2004 that Axel and Buckethead both went to an Allman Brothers gig at the Beacon Theatre. And apparently the rumor was that Axel actually wanted uh, Derek Trucks to come join Guns N' Roses. Now, it's kind of a weird story because in 2004 Buckethead was already out of the band, so it's possible that Axel was looking for a new guitarist. And so there was also this blog post called BigDamnBand.com. So on October 4th, 2006, they had a blog entry about being in the same place where Derek Trucks was and Axl Rose. And these are some photos that this guy took with Axl Rose. And they talked about how uh, Derek Trucks took some pictures there and how Axl was there playing songs off Chinese Democracy for everyone to listen to and how Axl was like buying drinks for people as well. And of course, this sort of ties Axl to the whole Derek Trucks story. Now, I don't know whether there's any truth to actually of him joining the band at one point or another. Now, if you guys want to read the entire blog post, I've linked to it down below. Now, there was also another article that came out uh, from IndieStar.com, and it sort of tied Axel to Derek Trucks. So Derek Trucks uh, played in a band back then called the Derek Trucks Band, and they were playing a gig at the Roxy Theater in uh, Hollywood, California. And Rose caught Trucks in action, then hit a VIP party upstairs at the bar on the rock. So I think that's where these photos were taken. And then in the same year, in March of 2006, Axel was sighted at an Allman Brothers band gig in New York City. So according to Splat, Axel Rose was seen on Saturday night, March 25th, at the Allman Brothers band gig in New York. The concert at the Beacon Theater was the final night for the band after a recent run of gigs at the venue. Unfortunately, it appeared that Axel was subjected to a tirade of abuse by an onlooker. Axel was reported to have left the scene with a crazy stare. Also reported in the same article that Derek Trucks was said to have been Axel Rose's favorite new guitarist of the moment. However, contrary to speculation, Trucks' manager insists that Trucks will be touring with Eric Clapton this summer and not Guns N' Roses. And in November of 2006, Del James, uh, who was Guns N' Roses tour manager, put out a letter uh, talking about you know these events surrounding the, uh, the tour that Guns N' Roses had been on, as well as Chinese democracy. And he actually mentioned Derek Trucks and confirmed that uh, he is a friend of Axel's. So uh, in his actual statement, he said, After Monday night's rehearsal, Axel and Guns N' Roses manager, uh, Merck, uh, went over to catch some of Eric Clapton's concert because, as it turns out, Axel's friend, guitarist Derek Trucks, is playing in Clapton's band. Now, in 2008, Axel was in search of another guitarist after Robin Fink left the band, and apparently around that time, Guns N' Roses auditioned over 100 guitar players before settling on the legendary DJ Ashba. So DJ Ashba was doing an interview back in 2015 and talked about how he actually got the gig for Guns N' Roses. Now, it wasn't clear as to whether uh, Derek Trucks was auditioned once again or whether Axel wanted him to join the band in 2008 or whether they're even still friends in 2008. So basically, he said uh, that Guns N' Roses management called me, which was actually my personal manager too, so that kind of helped. But they said, you know, Guns has been auditioning guitar players on the download. They've been through over 100 guitar players. Want to come down and check it out? And honestly, I never saw myself doing it. I was like, man, me and Axel are both from Indiana. I'd met him. Uh, Sharon Osborne introduced me when I was doing Beautiful Creatures record. They were next door doing Chinese Democracy record. And I was like, yeah, I'll go down. I'd love to see Axel again and say hi. And he wasn't there. But he caught wind I was going to come down and he called management and said, if he even shows up, he has the gig. And that's kind of how it happened. It, was, it wasn't really an audition process and I didn't even know that I was getting the gig. I just wanted to go down and kind of say hi to everybody. He continued, I didn't have a clue even after I accepted and everything. I had no idea the shoes I was stepping into were pretty hardcore. It was a hardcore thing. I'd never read a bad thing about me on the internet before, and now it was like, you're not slash F you, and I'm like, oh shit, this is a whole different thing. I mean, that kind of blindsided me because my head wasn't even there. I was like, I'm a fan of the band. I'm just trying to help keep the music alive. But, you know, I slowly won those, some of those over, so it's good. 
So that does it for this episode of Guns N' Roses True Story. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Let me know what your thoughts are on the passing of Greg Allman. Were you guys Allman Brothers fans? Comment down below and let me know. Be sure to also hit the like button if you enjoyed the contents of this video. And be sure to subscribe if you love Guns N' Roses as much as I do and you want to see more videos like this. And you can follow me on social media. The links to my social media channels are down below on Facebook and Twitter. Take care, guys.